morning! My name is Julianne. I am an education specialist here at the Lee Richardson Zoo and welcome to our program about habitats. So today we are going to learn what makes a habitat and we'll meet a couple animals that live in some different habitats around the world. So first off we have to figure out what makes up a habitat. So a habitat is where an animal lives, where any animal calls its home. And there are four things that make up a habitat. Now for each one of these, we do have an action, so I want all of you to join me with this. So the first thing that all animals need is food. Everything needs to eat something, right? So for food, we're gonna put our hand on our bellies and rub it around like we just ate a delicious meal. So everyone say food. Great job. So that's part one of habitats is food. The second thing that all animals need is water. So for this one, we're gonna turn our hand into a water bottle and take a nice big drink and say water. Fantastic. So everything needs food, everything needs water. Now, another thing that all animals need that makes up a habitat is shelter. They need a place to hide to stay safe from predators or from rain, right? So for shelter, we're gonna make a nice big house over our head and just say shelter. Fantastic. So there's food, water, shelter, and the last thing that makes up a habitat that all animals need to survive is space. So for this one, you just stick your arm straight out and kind of spin yourself around in a circle to show that you have plenty of space around you. Now I want you to imagine you are in your bedroom. And in your bedroom, I want you to think, would I be able to survive my whole life just in this room? Is there enough space for you if you're by yourself? Maybe, you can probably move your arms around, right? But is there enough food in your bedroom? Probably not. Is there enough water in your bedroom for you to live the whole rest of your life? Maybe not. So would we call your bedroom an entire habitat? Probably not for us, that's just one part of our habitat. Now, our house is our shelter, and in that house we have food and water, but we have to leave the house to go to the grocery store to get food, right? So, outside the whole world, that is a lot of our habitat. When you go to the grocery store, or go to your school, or just walking around your house, those are all parts of your habitat. And animals can kind of live in a similar way. They don't just stay in one single spot, but they'll all have their own special habitats where they could find, remember, food, water, shelter, and space. All right, friends, so let's meet our first animal guest. So this first animal is an animal that lives in a really hot, really dry place. So do you want to take a guess at what kind of area is really hot and really dry? If you said desert, you would be correct. Now this right here is Mojave, and Mojave is a desert tortoise. Now in the desert, they don't get a whole lot of rain. So take a guess, do you think a desert tortoise needs to drink a ton of water? Probably not, they're not going to be able to find very much. Now the amazing thing that these tortoises can do, they can go an entire year and only drink about one single cup of water. How much water have you had to drink today? I've already had more than one cup of water. So they don't need to have very much water to survive. And the way they get their water is very special. Now for us, how do we get our water? We usually go up to the sink and turn on the faucet, right? Or up to a drinking fountain and push the button and the water comes out. Well, can a tortoise do that? No, definitely not. They have to find other ways to find water. And in the desert, they don't have big puddles or ponds or lakes or rivers where they can find their water. So they have to do something very special. They find their water in their food. Now, what's that green spiky plant that grows in the desert? If you said cactus, you are exactly right. And that is the desert tortoise's food. So they're wandering around the desert and they see the cactus, they go up. Now, would we wanna take a big bite out of a cactus? 
I don't think that'd be very good for us. I think it'd poke my mouth. I don't think that sounds very fun. But for them, they're low to the ground. They're kind of short. So they can go underneath all the spikes. They just go right over their head and they walk up to the cactus and then they stick their nice long neck out and go between all those spikes. And then they take a nice little bite out of the green part of the cactus. Now tortoises, they don't have teeth like we do. They have a beak, more like a bird. And their beak acts like a pair of scissors. And so their beak goes up and they snip, snip. And that is how they get off a little piece of that leaf. Now cactuses, something really special about them is they hold a lot of water. They're very good at storing water. So the same time as the desert tortoise is finding its food with the cactus, it's also finding its water. So they will eat and drink at the same time. So that was their food, right? The cactus and the water also from the cactus even though they don't need very much of it throughout the year. But they still need shelter. Now looking at the tortoise, what do we think? What would their shelter be? Now some of you probably said their shell, and that is correct. Their shell can be used as shelter. They can kind of tuck their arms and their head into their shell and be protected from predators. But there is something else they will do to find shelter. They're really good at digging. Now, if you take a nice close look at his feet, he has these big claws in the front. And those claws act almost like shovels, and they will shovel out the dirt around them and make a burrow under the ground. And that way, they can be out of the sun, they're in the shade, like a nice shady cave under the ground. If it rains, because it does sometimes in the desert, not very often, but if it rains, they can go underneath and be nice and safe, and out of the rain, they can stay dry. And that would be another part of their shelter. So their shell and digging a hole in the ground in a burrow. And these guys, they have a plenty of space in the desert. There's not a ton of animals that live out there because it is so hot and dry. So they have plenty of space to walk around. They will wander around to find the different cactuses around, find their food and water, and they'll dig different holes. So that is all of their habitat in the desert. So even though it's a desert, there's water, right? Water bottle. They have their food of the cactus, their shelter of the burrow, and plenty of space to move around. So we'll give you a nice close look of our desert tortoise here. Now remember, if you have any questions, you can comment below and we will do our best to answer any of the questions that you have after watching our videos here. Alrighty, friends, and we are going to put Mojave back. So let's all say bye, Mojave. All right, great job, my friends. So we do have another animal guest for us to meet. And I'm gonna see if I can move her around here for you to get a nice view of our lovely boa constrictor. So this right here is Nagini. And Nagini is a boa constrictor. Uh, she is, can be known as a red tail boa. Now for them, they live in a very different type of habitat than the desert tortoise did. For them, it's still hot, but it's very wet. There's a lot of rain. There's a whole lot of trees. Do you want to take a guess at where you can find these snakes? If you guessed the rainforest, you are exactly correct. So it's hot. It's humid, it rains a lot, there's plenty of trees, lots of green, and that's where you find these awesome boa constrictors. Now, you can see she is in kind of a makeshift tree here, and that's because that's how she would be living in her home, in her habitat. These snakes will actually climb trees. Can you imagine trying to climb something without any arms or legs? I think that'd be so hard, but these snakes are better climbers than I am and they will move between the different layers of the forest. You can find them on the ground, maybe looking for food, but then they'll also be in the mid layer of the trees and even the upper level of those trees. So they're excellent climbers. Now something really special about these boa constrictors that helps them survive in those trees is actually their coloration. So you'll notice on the top, they have these dark colors with lighter spots on their back. So I want you to imagine in the rainforest, there's light coming through the leaves, but it's not going to be a bunch of light, right? There's going to be spots and the rest of it's going to be shadows. So if you're looking down on the snake, it blends in. 
So she's really good at hiding when she's up in the trees and something's looking down at her. But on her belly, her underneath side is actually a lighter color. So if there's an animal on the ground looking up, it's gonna look like sunlight coming through the trees. So she's really well hidden as she is moving around. Now for her, remember, what are the four things that we have to find in a habitat for something to survive? Food, water, shelter, and space. So I already said it rains a lot. Now snakes don't need to drink a ton of water, but she's never going to have a shortage because the rainforest, there's always some water around, whether it's water just collecting on the leaves, raining down on the ground, puddling on the ground, plenty of water around. Now for her, her food will be a little different than the, the desert tortoise. So our desert tortoise ate cactus, they ate plants. These guys will actually eat other animals and they're always smaller animals. I uh, think about the size of rats, um, mice, those rodents especially, maybe occasionally a bird, but they will eat other animals in order to survive. So that's why they have to be really well hidden. They're hiding from their food so that they can catch them at some point. Now for their shelter, I already mentioned it a little bit, but their shelter is going to be those trees where they're hiding. They can be within the leaves. They can stay safe. They're also hiding from possible predators so they don't get eaten themselves. And those trees provide excellent shelter, an excellent place for them to hide. And finally, for space, again, they have that whole different layers of the trees. They can move around in the rainforest. Now, something really important for us to remember is that the rainforest, sometimes they get cut down because we use too much stuff from the rainforest. Things like paper or where our different foods come from. We want to be really careful about that. So when you go to the grocery store with your family, something you can do to help our rainforest animals is actually look for a little logo that has a frog, has a little tree frog in the middle. It's called the Rainforest Alliance. And if you see that little tree frog hanging out like this on that logo, it tells you that that product has protected the rainforest. It's not cutting any of those trees down. So that's a way that you can actually help our boa constrictor friends all the way on the other side of the world, which is pretty cool to be able to do that right here at home. So. Once again, habitats. For her, the rainforest has plenty of food, plenty of other animals wandering around that she can find. Plenty of water as it's raining and collecting on the leaves and the ground. Plenty of shelter with all those trees and their big leaves. And plenty of space for these snakes to move around. All right, once again, if you do have any questions about our boa constrictor friend or ways that you can help our rainforest, comment below and we will do our best to get answers to you guys. All right, fantastic. So again, that is Nagini. Now, before I say goodbye, we are doing something really special. We are creating some education activities for you to do after you watch our programs. So. In the comments below, you will see a sheet that looks like this. And you can either print these out, you can do them on the computer with your families, but try to fill these out. Try to see if you can find the answers on this activity from just watching our videos. All right, my friends, I hope you learned a lot today all about our habitats and different animals and how they use different homes to live in. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for joining us at the Lee Richardson Zoo.